guest on episode 220 of AWSM Comedy Radio. We have a special guest that we'll reveal later, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is happy holidays! A W M Radio. That was good. Oh, it starts yeah. over again. Let's do it again. It's a happy Let's holiday. Let's get into a time loop. Let's get into a time loop. Do everything twice tonight. I think that should be the theme. Here with Help. us tonight, uh, we have a very special guest, Patrick Stanley. Please welcome him. Yeah. I do that with my voice a lot. Hey, I do that like. What do you do with your voice a lot? Because I hear that you were once in a choir with this gentleman Me, named my name's Tom, Tom by the way. And yeah. This is Logan. Hello, right, I'm right. Logan. Podcast uh, listeners. Yeah. yeah. Formula. Happy holidays. Formula's out the window tonight. I asked our guest a question, and you both graciously interrupted him <laughs> like really good hosts. Uh, so let's come back to that question. Because yeah, Patrick, now, what do you use your voice for? Yeah. Ah, uh, I... Uh, I mostly do some like weird voices, but much, much, much less offensive voices than in college when I knew Tom. So <laughs> we were. So, <laughs> what are some of these offensive you know, voices? I feel, you got to appeal to the broader audience of five out there, not the audience of one. <laughs> yeah. In terms of uh, what we expect for your offensive voices, that could have been your secret, you and Tom. Yeah. Yeah, and now we all know that you've done offensive voices, in the and, past. Yeah, and you've already opened up the door. So throughout the episode, I'm definitely going to ask about that <laughs> again, but yeah. I can't do that right yet because now it's time for a fun fact with Logan. Fun fact: Daddy long legs have penises and are therefore not spiders. Hey. Sp- spiders have you, have don't have ever, penises. Have you ever seen know a spider with a penis? Have you ever seen, ever seen a spider penis? I never looked like that. <laughs> oh, no. Gross. Gross on all accounts. Spiders and penises. Gross. I hate both those things. <laughs> you, I know for a fact you don't hate right. one of those You're right. There's a, an animal, though, that has one leg and eight penises, and Nick's really into that. Oh. <laughs> Touche. So, Patrick, uh, tell me about these offensive spider dick voices that you do. <laughs> <laughs> now, what what was the most offensive voice that you got away with back in the days? With don't do Tom the voice. Alone? No, don't, no, don't, but don't. just don't maybe do like the voice. in a in a like a uh, like uh, turn down the offensive. Like if you can like censor the t- name of it, maybe. No, I think uh, growing up in uh, in Ohio and especially going to college in Finley, Ohio, you're surrounded by white people and you're constantly and you're only exposure to white people, and so there's just the. Uh, a lot of racism that hadn't been unlearned. And so you do different accents and things like that, where I remember there was a, um, an episode of, of scream Queens where there was someone who did a ton of accents and some were offensive and some were not. If you do European accents, it's not offensive, but if you do <laughs> other regional accents, it's not, it's yeah. much more offensive. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. No, but sometimes it's a valuable can, lesson. You, I didn't know this was an issues episode. We're learning a lot tonight. Lots of issues. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you can get away with it depending on the costume. Because Logan, no, you, I wouldn't no, say that. I, so. I, I don't know. I don't know. No, dress up like a oh, witch wait, doctor, but you use a remember, Scottish accent. Remember <laughs> when we were doing live shows at Gorilla Tango Theater, and there was this one character that I did from the audience in a big straw hat and huge glasses that covered my whole face. And I did a very, very specific Asian accent. Oh my god! And it like it I went over really you well. You know, Ooh, I don't still, think I still think it was offensive. It was offensive. Yeah. Okay. But I don't. South Park is offensive, and we laugh at that. So I just I don't think it's kind of interesting, like what we are allowed to get away with and what we know that we. Are can. you talking it's about when you were in breakfast? This conversation has gotten this way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, breakfast at Tiffany. <laughs> no, it wasn't like, that. I it wasn't quite like that. So, Patrick, you're involved in, correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. because I was a terrible host and didn't ask you any questions mm-hmm. before we started this recording. Sorry. You're involved with immigration in some way. Yes. Tell me how that's going right now. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of issues going on. So right. back in, um, I've been involved uh, working with immigrants for a while, but right now I uh, 
I've worked with a lot of different types of immigrants, but right now um, I actually work with older adults who are immigrants. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, really interesting. Uh, but before, I've done a lot of activism and organizing with uh, with undocumented youth. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's just it's been really impactful because uh, through my work, because uh, I'm a social worker. Yes. Um, and I work with older adults. I see a lot of um, immigrant older adults and a lot of them don't have papers and just kind of see working with them. Uh, it just kind of like social work and activism fuel each other. So it's just kind of both going well, on. Let me ask the obvious question. So yeah. in light of the recent ban that was originally blocked by some very wonderful mm -hmm. judges. If you're listening what? to this 30 years in the future, it's yes. 2017. It's 2017. Yeah. Just and a little while. We 2017, and we're really happy that a child blester did not get <laughs> elected to, to the happened. Senate, just and it was a really week. close yeah. race. Ro yeah. Rory Yay. Moore is no more. Yeah. I think that should have been a headline somewhere. But how... How much has this impacted your work? Have you had to deal with increased numbers of uh, deportations, or how has it affected you personally? Um, so, or has it? I mean, as a social worker, um, you, we're dealing with a lot of people who have like a lot, a lot of fear and anxiety. So, yeah. um, and a lot of times, people who work in mental health are really quick to say, "Oh, like you have anxiety," um, but you're and anxiety is a disorder if you have if what you're having anxiety about is unfounded. Uh, whereas undocumented communities in Chicago and all over the U.S. have a very well-founded yeah. fear um, and reason to have anxiety. So, um, and it's just it was bad before, um, but it's only gotten worse. So, um, basically, what I'm kind of hearing from like a lot of my colleagues who have done way more organizing work that I have um, and other people who are doing like direct work is that it's uh, it, it's nothing new, but it's just in, a little more intense. Yeah. And I thought this was a comedy show. It is. <laughs> and we're talking about really funny stuff. No, but we do like to talk about things that matter and we get, get people in it. here that are social workers or mm -hmm. they are writers and they've contributed their message in a very politically empowered way. Mm -hmm. And I just, I think that's kind of the happy medium that we've found is that right here in the middle, we talk about some real shit yeah. and then we'll play a game and forget all about I this appreciate nonsense that. for a lot. minute. But if I can, or briefly, we can have BP Brian Johnson on and talk about <laughs> Mental disorders and uh, make jokes constantly, nonstop at the same time. And, and that's allowed because yeah. that's his shtick. Yeah. And talk about penis contests. Didn't he talk about penis contests at the end of his episode? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> so many episodes. <laughs> episode 220 right now. We have a lovely lady. Here, I did that voice again. Oh, you uh, weren't lying earlier. Elizabeth <laughs> That was a really offensive voice, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> That was an a Pee Wee yeah, Herman voice. Believe. An aging Elmer Fudd. That is not that Europe. Is. I don't that even is. know what that voice is. I would say it's a Pee Wee Herman voice, actually. It's actually my voice. It's just raised in pitch. In, like, Your voice is obnoxious. really offensive. You yeah. know everybody in Kajikistan <laughs> speaks like that. So Elizabeth Hatton is going to be on the next episode, episode 221, which you should also listen to. However, uh, she and I were talking earlier a little bit about fear. So I just wanted to see if... Do you had anything to say or add to about his fear? Well, because yeah, no, we were about <laughs> oh basically fear being this blockade that can get in the way of us creating a foundation or doing anything that we want to do. Yeah. So if you wanted to comment or echo anything sure. that Patrick said, like feel free because you all are about to play a stupid game <laughs> together. Yeah, I think uh, especially after the election, um, a lot of people have experienced fear and doubt and I think any anybody who felt that beforehand um, it's only been magnified. magnified absolutely and um, you know I just watching different um, immigrant rights groups mm -hmm. and having gone to like a rally I mean like I'm not that involved and I like that's amazing don't look at Patrick it's amazing don't do it <laughs> well, it's amazing. get off the microphone well, it's, <laughs> it's not worth it <laughs> it's Sorry. amazing that he's doing that work and I just think it's um, incredible that, you know, I'm sure that you face fear in some way uh, yourself, you know, working with undocumented people. And um, so 
So I just, I think now is the time to take fear and use it as a propellant and use it to move forward. And I think that's, um, yeah, I've definitely experienced that. I've been moving around a lot and, mm-hmm. um, that's one of, scary in and it's, of itself. Yeah. And yeah, that's, terrifying. It's, it's, yeah. it's terrifying. It's stressful. Yeah. Fear puts you in a corner and it's either fight or flight. And when you don't have the flight option. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I've been flying a lot. <laughs> so yeah. now it's time to land. Yeah. And um, I I really want to build this foundation um, in the next probably 10 to 20 years. I'm trying to build it really slowly and intentionally, um, taking time to observe. But it's really scary, too, uh, to think about what that might look like or what the the blowback might be from that, too. There's a lot of um, politics involved. Mm -hmm. I had somebody who offered to maybe even back me that they were politically motivated, and so I kind of cut. Distance the, yourself from yeah, that. Yeah, I distance my. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Absolutely. I like. Good I like you. that you're. I, I feel very like supported because I feel like you're talking uh, in in a somewhat like universal and vague way, which is good because it's like <laughs> everybody can apply what you were saying. <laughs> Absolutely. Not everybody, but you know, most people. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Like I feel better now about my own <laughs> shit. You know. <laughs> so I work with children a lot. Um, <laughs> and I kind of have this mantra because, you know, teaching kids how to act or audition where I just say, feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm-hmm. It's not going to go away. It's never going to go away. And I like that word that you used, using it as a propellant, a fuel, yeah. so that you learn to control that mm-hmm. energy rather than allow it to control you. Mm-hmm. So you're both singers mm-hmm. in <laughs> some capacity. <laughs> and in just a little bit, we're going to play a game that involves Singing talent, not so much singing <laughs> talent as mental talent, but a mm, little from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> but Patrick, before we get into the game, is there anywhere that you would direct people that don't know where to begin to seek help regarding issues of deportation or just basic rights for undocumented immigrants? Absolutely. So if you have, um, if you're witnessing immigration enforcement in different places, um, or if someone you know or uh, an acquaintance or a friend is ever in uh, danger of deportation proceedings, you can always contact um, Organized Communities Against Deportations. Um, it's a volunteer, undocumented-led organization, activist organization uh, here in Chicago. They often call themselves OCAD, which is Organized Communities Against Deportations, um, and they will actually organize for people that are uh, in deportation proceedings. Um, And they organize rallies, uh, marches as well under the Protection for All movement. Um, And then another resource is that there and um, the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights is an organization I used to work for and still work closely with even while I met um, in my social work job. Um, And they have a family support line. So they have an 800 line that I'm actually not sure what it is right now, but you can always call um, and ask any sort of uh, question that has to do with like um, protection and, and if you have like family or friends that are in danger of deportations. Um, so yeah, so OCAD, or Organized Communities Against Deportations, um, the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant Refugee Rights, and the Protection for All movement. If you like all three on social media, then you should be good to go and informed. Great. Check yeah. out those links below in the description. And now... Yeah, definitely click on that and don't go to the college in Canada. OCAD. <laughs> yeah, no. That's yeah, that's, that's different. That's different. Don't, <laughs> you don't need to not go there. I'm yeah, sure you, can do it. you can do both. We're not anti-Canada <laughs> yeah. by like any means. I, I have to say this. like Before we move on to again, do you believe in magic powers? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I like your what? I like your crystal. No, I'm finicking around because I've had the. What is yours? What's medium. your precious stone? Uh, this is tiger's eye. Tiger's eye. See, yeah. I used to collect rocks when I was a kid. Me too. So I had tiger's eye and hematite and amethyst and all those lovely things. No. I had this that gray one, one I've had and the other gray since one. I was six years old, and I wow. recently, like in the last week after I witnessed that terrible shooting started carrying it again Mm -hmm. because is that quartz yeah who cares like anything to help me feel less anxiety or rather less fear are you all afraid to play this game no well you better not be because we're about to play a game oh my gosh (laughs) 
It's all jumbled up because it's it's the wrong tune, you see. Uh, this is tune wrong sing along, right? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, that's what yeah, we're doing. Yeah, let's, let's, do let's do that one. Let's do that. Tune wrong sing along is a game where uh, I will play the melody of one song and you must sing the lyrics to a different song. I have the lyrics uh, printed out right here. I have four options for you to select, uh, and one of you is going to have to go first, which is the worst part. When you select a song, I will play about five seconds of the melody so you get a sense of the key and, and uh, how it's going to play. It's just like a MIDI piano accompaniment uh, for these songs. So you could choose Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, sung to the melody of Hark the Herald, oh, O Come All Ye Faithful, sung to the melody of We Three Kings, Let It Snow, sung to Auld Lang Syne, or Away in a Manger, sung to Silent Night. Uh, have you found your songs yet? Sure. <laughs> no. Oh, only, that Patrick kind of confidence requires that Patrick go oh, first. I'm going to do Rudolph. Patrick, come on, feel, feel the fear and do it anyway. Rudolph to Hark the Herald. So I'll just give you a little taste right. of what Hark the Herald sings, uh, Wait, sings so, like. So, sings like. <laughs> what Hark the Herald sounds like first, and then on the second go around, you will have to sing it. So here is what it sounds like. All right, are you ready? Yep. Let's go for it. This is Hark the Hair or this is Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer sung to Hark the Herald. The Red Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of all the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. They never let poor Rudolph join in any of those damn reindeer games. Then one There we go, there it is. Yeah. There go. That was uh I was was, uh, done. It's amazing oh who <laughs> successfully pulls this off. Sometimes it's just a disaster. Sometimes people I'm, nail it. Uh, I'm, I'm so surprised. Elizabeth, what, are your, what is your selection? <laughs> I have um, a way in a manger sung to Silent Night. I also have a really bad cold. So oh. I know. This is going to be very interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. I, okay, here it is. Uh, I'll give you a little taste first of the Silent Night melody, and then uh, you'll be required to sing it. <laughs> Here is a taste. Required. 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 It's a slow one. (laughs) All right, here we go. You ready? Try this. Here it is. Would you like to say anything else to get some pity points for having a cold and doing this anyway? Because <laughs> this is your chance, anyway. both of you, if you want to solicit anything from the audience before we vote by applause. No. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I I'm like, uh, everybody who'd like to vote for Patrick, I want to hear applause. <laughs> everybody who'd like Aww. to vote for Elizabeth, I want to hear applause. <laughs> All right, that means the winner... Uh, because of injury, perhaps, but you also did a great job, is Patrick. Yay! Okay, I did that thing again last time this episode. So I wanted to thank you both for coming out to a stranger's apartment, which is basically, (laughs) you know, unheard of, where you Mm -hmm. have now done your uh, podcast. You've popped your (laughs) podcast cherry. Thank you so much, uh, Patrick, for being a guest. Let's give everyone another final round of applause. Well, thank you guys for having me. And be sure and check out episode 221 where you can hear Elizabeth uh, on her very own episode. Thanks for listening. We're Awesome Monster. Visit www.awesomemonster.com for future details, social media links, and all of those things that don't really matter.
Thanks, guys, for being on. Great job. This is a hard game. We've had a lot of refusals on this game. <laughs>